Like the fact that we feel like we're limiting ourselves, we feel the need to limit ourselves by saying we can only have one, I think is more detrimental to us because it makes us, you know, it reflects on us as if we don't think we're worthy of any, any more or any better than what we have. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Do You Know Black Creators Kickback. I'm Melissa. And I'm Darnell. And we're the creators and executive producers of the Do You Know Black Game Show and the Do You Know Black Kickback. In this episode, Lamont asks, is it fair to expect other Black people to share their expertise, time, and resources because we are part of the same culture? So, Darnell, I'm going to pose this question to you. How do you feel? Yeah, so, so this was actually an episode that really um, resonated with me because I think where we are, um, you know, our age group, I think a lot of our peers, we're all just kind of, we're trying to figure it out. And uh, this, there, this question has like two different components to it. So the first one is asking, um, do we feel that other black people, if it's like their responsibility um, to, to share their knowledge and resources with other black people because they're part of the same culture. And then the other component in the question that Lamont asked later on is, do we actually feel that we are upholding this idea of each one teach one? I, I think that anybody who wants to make community a priority or anybody that wants to see black people advance where as a priority, I think that it is their responsibility um, to do that. Do I think that we are, as a people, living up to that responsibility? No, um, I, I don't think we are. And I think that there are a lot of different reasons for it. One of the things that Cynthia mentioned was the fact that we have a scarcity mindset uh, within our culture. And I think that that scarcity mindset is oftentimes what makes us not want to share information or resources with other people. Or sometimes we might share information and resources with other people, but not necessarily enough to help them in a way that we could truly help them. And the second one was something that Jeff said was, uh, he, he was saying how a lot of people, they want to see you do well, they just don't want to see you do better than they're doing. And that's something that that I definitely think we've all probably seen. Uh, when I was in school, well, I mean, I, when I was in community college, actually, I had this class and the class was called Pluralism and, Pluralism and Diversity. And they, they had this case study and asked people, would you rather make $100,000 and live in a neighborhood where everybody else makes $120,000? Or would you rather live in a neighborhood where, would, would you rather make $80,000 and live around a bunch of people who make $60,000? And statistically, the results showed that people would rather make $80,000 while everybody else makes $60,000 because they would rather be ahead of other people than have more for themselves and have other people be ahead of them. And I think that that's the mindset that we have as a culture and it, it creates an unnecessary and counterproductive amount of competition. Not that competition is not good, but there's healthy competition and then there's unhealthy competition. And I do think that sometimes we have an unhealthy competition, so. I do feel like on the education front, it's our responsibility as black people, if we, again, care about elevating our race, I do feel like it's our responsibility to help share that information, to be transparent about the processes we take, the steps that we've taken uh, to help other people, you know, get past those hoops. Why do we feel like we need to, I, I remember in college, like having to do all of these internships, thinking like, after I graduate, I need to be competitive. Like, this is what I need to do in order to graduate and get a job right after. Like, I did not want to have the same struggle that I knew other people before me had had. But at the same time, like people coming behind me who weren't necessarily putting in that work or who didn't really know what steps to take to do that, um, I felt like, why would I hold this information back? These programs I didn't even know existed when I was in school. Um, 
if I had just known about it, it would have made my life so much easier. I, I wouldn't have had to kind of go through different hoops and trial, trial and error and all of these experiences. I feel like now, like my mentee now, I'm, I literally give her lists of here's this program, apply to this, apply to that. This is what you need to do at this point. She's a junior now. I'm like, at this point, this is what the, the, the steps that you need to start taking to make sure that she's competitive by the time she graduates. Me harboring that information does not do anything for me. You know, like what value do I get out of holding her back? from 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 doing better just because i had to figure it out on my own doesn't mean that she needs to struggle now that i've gotten past that point and i feel like going back to what you were saying before sometimes black people feel like if i did all this work i put in all this effort and this person's just coming behind me and they're they're getting it easy like nah they need to put in the work too i i don't agree with that what I would say is that there are people, I, I can't remember who brings it up in the episode, but I know it comes up for a second, that um, some people aren't serious. There's different levels of seriousness that people have about the business. So if somebody's coming in and they just decide, you know, maybe they did a bunch of other jobs or they were in like a specific career at one point, and then they decide completely, I wanna do something different and they're not even necessarily serious about it. They're just looking for the next hustle or something. This is just an example. And they're like, yo, put me on. Like they hit you up and they're like, yo, I, I, I heard there's a lot of money in drop shipping. Put me on. How can I get into this? Like how serious are they about it? Are they just looking for their next thing? Like how, like, are they going to put in the energy that you put in? I can understand from that point why it would be difficult for someone to want to help this person if it's like, all right, I'm just looking for the next big thing. Are you gonna help me or are you not? And then you never hear from them again. Like we've had this conversation about people with very transactional relationships um, and they've hit either of us up, you know, at one point asking for something and then you never hear from them again after that. And then even with the information you've given them, they've never passed it on to anyone else after that. All they're looking for is like to better themselves. They're not doing it for the community. They're literally doing it for themselves. So I can understand why people would say, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna help you. Like if you're not gonna pass this information down, why am I gonna pass this on to you when you're literally never going to help anyone else after you've gotten what you want out of it, yeah. so. We can't take for granted that when we get to the point of having a certain amount of knowledge, that we've probably experienced a certain amount of things. So the things that I know now, 35 going on 36 years old, the things that I know now, if I were, if, if 22 year old Darnell were to come and speak to me, like I, I don't even know how I would be able to communicate to my younger self. Because nothing can, can communicate 16 years of, or, or I'm sorry, 14 years of experience. So when people come up to me and they don't have a certain amount of knowledge, even if they haven't even started, I'm still typically open to having a certain type of conversation. But I frame my conversation around where that person is. And I also frame it to make sure that they know that there's a certain amount of work they have to put in. So for example, the one area that I would qualify myself as like an expert in is in the area of careers, resumes, interviews, anything along that those lines, I feel like I'm an expert in those spaces. A lot of people come to me and ask me questions about transitioning careers, resume building, how to get into this field, how to, you know, negotiate your salary, whatever it is. So I had a, a mentee of mine, somebody that I really took a vested interest in, and we'll talk about mentorship, and, and we'll talk about mentorship in a few, but I was, I remember he came to me and he was looking for, for a job, and I had an opportunity for him. So I was like, hey, well, before I had an opportunity for him, I was like, okay, you're looking for a job, send me your resume. I looked at his resume, decent structure, but I gave, I took the time, I probably took about an hour, went through, redlined the whole thing, wrote everything down, like did change this, fix this, fix this, do that, do that, do that, right? Took a lot of time to do that. And I sent it back to him to fix. He's like, okay, great, sure. And then I had an opportunity at my company and I was like, hey, yo, like I got an opportunity for you, send me a resume. And he's like, okay, perfect. And then he sent me his resume 
And it was the exact same resume that he had sent me before. So at this point, I was like, ah, it's okay that you didn't have the knowledge. I didn't discount you because you didn't have the knowledge, but I did give you starting work. So the example that you're talking about was, uh, was Chris. And Chris was talking about uh, uh, somebody that's interested in photography and videography. And if somebody comes up to him and asks him for help, but they don't even have a camera, then he can't necessarily take them seriously. In my mind, I'm like, okay, I can understand that perspective. The way I might approach it and the way that I would tell people to approach it is saying, don't just discount them because they don't have a camera. I'll tell them, hey, listen, here are some of the things that you're gonna need to get started, right? Here are a few videos that you can look at, right? Like here are some people that I think are informative. Um, here's uh, here are some different really good affordable starter cameras. So first, do 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 this homework. Go and watch these videos. After you watch these videos, tell me what you think, and then we could start our conversation there. Similarly, same thing, weight loss. I had like another weight loss journey. A lot of people will ask me, everybody want to lose weight until you have to lose to, to work, right? So it's like, they, they would ask me these questions and uh, I'm like, okay, cool. So there are these YouTubers that helped me and I'll share all these videos with them to say, hey, it doesn't take me any work effort to say, hey, here's some really good resources for you. Use that first, but I don't just leave it there. I say, hey, come back to me. I'm available after you've done this first part and then we can go to step two. I think a lot of times when people see somebody is at the very beginning, they forget at one point you were at the very beginning too. So why not make their very beginning a little bit easier by even just sharing the right resources for them? But I think a lot of times when people see that, it's like, oh, you haven't done your work yet. I can't, you're not taking it serious. They may not even know where to start, right? So, so that's, my, that's my thought on that counter position. I mean, I think that I, I agree with what you say, like we shouldn't be so quick to discount people at, you know, for where they are. But we also have to remember, I feel like some people come in at different stages with different expectations. So they might be beginners at the very beginning, but they're skipping to step D and they're coming to you like, hey, yo, I'm, we talk about this all the time because, you know, you experience this in, you know, as a recruiter where somebody might come and say, look, I'm looking to change career paths completely. Here's a job I'm interested in. Can you get me in? And they might be, uh, you know, uh, a programmer trying to get into like, Filmmaking, right? Like completely different tracks, don't have the experience to back that and then are kind of looking to get in, right? Not looking for help me learn, I'm looking to transition. And I think that we as people also need to be mindful of that where we are on our on our own. Like we need to be able to recognize this is where I'm at and this is this is where I need to start. Let me ask somebody and figure out what steps I need to take as opposed to just jumping to the end. Like, can you put me on? Like we get this all the time where people, you know, being in corporate when somebody's looking to get into a job and then they hit you up out of nowhere and they're like, yo, can you put in a word for me at the company? And then it looks like, you know, it could look like you're blocking them. Like you're trying to block them from getting through if you don't feel comfortable passing along the resume, but you have to help us help you. Like I need to understand What's your experience? Like, is your resume in a good place before I pass it along? If we're giving you tips, like you were talking about, are you taking these tips before you get to that step? Because otherwise it's not gonna be successful. I can only take you so far. So I feel like we all need to kind of just be mindful of that. And I don't know you know, if you had anything to, to tack onto that, but I kind of wanted to shift back to Lamont's original question when he asked about whether or not um, you know, we have this obligation to share our time, um, resources and expertise with one another. And I think that there's a, a, a distinction. Yes, we should be sharing our education um, and our knowledge with others, with other black people and helping build them up. But do we necessarily need to share our resources? I think it depends. Um, because when you think of, I feel like it goes back to how we value each other as professionals and in business. To me, to expect if somebody is a consultant, they get paid for this work, right? Like if they are a professional consultant that is consulting brands um, on, on marketing and other small businesses on all of these things, building them up, this is their livelihood here. I feel like when sometimes, 
you experience this where other black people devalue what your work is when they come to you and say, hey, can you hook me up and, you know, help me with my business? I feel like it's, it's a, would you ask a white business this? Like, would you, if you were to reach out to a consultant, a white consultant, you might go in with the expectation that you're gonna have to pay them for their services, pay them for their for their business to help build your brand. But if you go to somebody else that looks like you, I kind of feel like there's this expectation, all right, this is too much. You know, this might be too much money for me. Can you give me a discount? Or, you know, can you hook me up? Give me this for free. Like if we wouldn't ask that of a white business, the fact that we would ask that of our own people to me takes away some of the value and it shows that we don't value our own people the same way that other people do, that we would value other people. So, so this is how I think the trickle effect happens. We withhold information from another black person that could help them move faster. After we withhold that information that could help them move faster, now they have to do it by themselves. And because they have to do them by themselves, they're stretching themselves thin. And maybe they're not, they're not as far along in their entrepreneurial journey as maybe they could have been with your help. So now they go and they turn around, they have this business, and now their business that they lift, they did from scratch themselves, very admirable, but it still has some gaps in it. Sometimes black businesses might have a gap that sometimes other cultures' businesses don't necessarily have in them. Sometimes we've, I don't wanna, you know, not knocking our businesses, even, even our business, right? Our business has a lot of gaps in it. So I'll just use myself, right? So when I'm talking to different people, I approach it understanding like, hey, we're not there yet. So uh, sometimes we want that, sometimes we end up wanting that credibility of a well-established, well-oiled business in that respect when it's like, okay, on the flip side, can I hold you accountable the same way that I'll hold them accountable? So what, oftentimes what we end up seeing is, and, and we're entrepreneurs, so I'm just saying this like in, in, in relation to your point, we see people say, well, like black businesses, like, like pay this rate, like treat it the same way, so on and so forth. But then on the flip side, it's like, but we also want you to give grace, right? So it's kind of like, okay, so what you want me to do is like, give a certain amount of grace, give me a certain amount of mental, uh, give, give a certain amount of patience, give a certain amount of tolerance while you grow and while you build. Then on the flip side, it's like, but I also have to have that while also mentally telling myself that I need to take you as seriously as another type of business. And I think that this is the trickle effect when we withhold information, when we're not trying to help people, ag other black businesses aggressively move and grow forward, right? Where sometimes like e even when we talk about, I've never, I have spent hours upon hours helping people with interview prep, helping people with resumes, helping people with career pathing, whatever it is. I've never charged a penny. And I, I don't know if I'll ever charge a penny for that, right? Because, I understand the only expectation that I have of people for me is are you the type of person that's going to share that information with somebody else? So I think that there's a trickle effect that happens because we're not there yet. And if we're not aggressively trying to help ourselves get there, a lot of times our businesses are, are not going to be the word that in corporate America, a lot of times in interviews in rooms, you hear the word like unpolished. A lot of times you're gonna be like, you're gonna be close, but there's that little bit of polish that you don't have. That's where we are. I think that we're kind of close, but there's a polish that we don't have. And a lot of it is because the reality is we're not necessarily getting the help that we, we, we have to do a lot of our own and that's okay. We've taken that on. We have some great resources. I've been through the process where it's like, yo, I'm using somebody. I'm, I ask you, what's your rate? This is my rate. Okay, bet. I'll pay you your rate. Two weeks passes by, three weeks passes by. Yo, you said it was gonna be done in two weeks. Like, where are we at? Oh, something came up. Oh, okay, cool. So wh when can it be done? Okay, give me another week. Okay, fine, another week. Hey, what's going on? Now I'm chasing you. I paid you your rate. Why am I chasing you? I, and I'm an entrepreneur. I don't, have, I don't have the legal team to go and say, give me my money back. 
I don't have the extra money to go out and go find somebody else to do the work that you said you were going to deliver two weeks ago. So it's like, so can we start, are we going to start having that conversation too? I think it goes both ways where, but I think the core of why that dynamic happens so often is because we withhold information from ourselves. We with is because we withhold information from each other that can help us do business better. Right. And that's the important, it's all together. It, it's all a cycle. So, so this is what you said. I, I feel is very powerful when you actually start thinking about how it gets to that point and why that dynamic exists and why does that dynamic persist? <laughs> it's interesting. Um, I, I, I was reading an article and they were talking about um, small businesses. You know, small businesses are over 80, 90 percent of our, the U.S. economy like is made up of small business. 20 percent as a whole. 20% of small of businesses, small businesses will fail in the first year. When it comes to black businesses, eight and 10, 80% of black businesses will fail in the first 18 months. And to me, that's, that's insane. Like that the, the idea that the majority of our businesses will not succeed. Um, and grant you, you know, mind you, these are businesses that are all single proprietary, like single sole, sole proprietary. Type. These are all <laughs> businesses that are not, um, that don't have employees. So all run by single people. And the idea, I feel like that plays into the idea that like we need to be supportive of our businesses and more than one. So when we talk about the idea of paying people their rate, when we talk, talk about the idea of taking these businesses seriously, like you helping this business stay in business is what's going to create a path for you to come out behind them and do what you need to do. If there's three, if, if, if three photography businesses are opening up, all three of them fail in the first, the first year, and then somebody comes in behind them and wants to open up that business, they talk about access to capital is the biggest by far biggest business, um, biggest issue with uh, black owned businesses is the access to capital. We don't have, we get denied for loans at a higher rate than every other race. We have less access to, to capital within our own networks. So it's a big struggle for us. So to even get a business off the ground takes a lot. And if they can't even get past that first year because we're not supporting them through even paying their rate, what they're asking for, passing the word along to the about these businesses and helping get them more business, then how can we expect that they're supposed to contribute anything back? We can't ask them to like, hey, put me on, but at the same time, we've done nothing to help them thrive because once they're gone, they're gone. And now that you wanna be put on, they're not gonna be there to help you. And at the same time, those business, that company that might have taken a chance on them, giving them that loan. Um, or you talk about programming and creatively a show gets out there, gets put on by a major network, nobody watches it. And now you're trying to come in behind them and start your own version of Insecure. If nobody had watched that show and it failed, there wouldn't be shows coming in behind them, which are re replicating that same formula because it would have never worked. And then the networks are like, we're not gonna take a chance on that. So I feel like us, it's like a, a cycle of, uh, we need to support before we can be supported. Like a lot has to happen at the same time. We have to share information urgently today. We have to pay people their rates or the agreed upon rate today. Maybe the gap is that sometimes we are discouraged to help people because we don't necessarily, ne there, well, maybe there's a few things, right? Like maybe one, sometimes maybe we don't think the people are going to succeed. So that's why we don't help them. Like I, I've seen situations and this is, this is a sad example, but like I've seen situations where parents will, um, will scold their kids or discourage their kids from trying something, not because they don't think the kid would want to do it or whatever, or it would be detrimental, but because in their mind, like they don't believe in that child. And what does that do for that child? Or it might be projecting onto them. I wouldn't do that. So I, so if I were you, I wouldn't do that either. But it's like, but you're not me. So are you going to try to help me where I am? So sometimes that's something that prevents people from helping. 
But then I think that there's the truly the co- the competitive nature of things as well, where sometimes people will see you and you might be moving at a really fast pace. You might be like on the verge of making things happen and they see you, it's like, man, they're moving really fast and they view your success as almost a reflection of their inadequacy. And then maybe that's why they may not help you. And a lot of the information that we have, like my cousins and I, we always talk, our parents had a lot of love for us. They had a lot of care, but they weren't able to teach us about business. So we are like the first generation of, of my family that is learning business, understanding business, figuring out how to execute that. And we have to share that information across. So we're not, uh, we're not necessarily getting that information from the previous generation the way that other cultures may be getting it from previous generations. So I think that increases the burden of responsibility on us to share information with each other because the previous generation was fighting a very different battle. If you were in America, you were fighting a a social battle for equality, right? That we still fight today, but it was very, very different. If you're an immigrant, you that that was the situation that you were dealing with and figuring out how to come over to this country and make ends meet. We're the first generation that's okay, like we have these opportunities. How do we navigate in this corporate world and figure out like how business works and how to like really launch these things successfully? And if we're not gonna share the information, then we're gonna make there's gonna be a lot of trial and error, but there's gonna be a lot more error that's going to lead to people being afraid. To try, right? So it's funny because you touched on, I agree with your points. You touched on the idea of competition. And I think that's like a big, another big element is that. So I think Ellie mentions this when he talks about the idea of like the crabs in a barrel and the fact that we still have this mindset that only one person can make it. Like, and because of that, I feel like this competition that we have internally and the idea that you need to pay some sort of dues to get to that point also holds us back where we feel like, okay, this could also be kind of maybe old school versus the new school where social media, you know, has helped people, you know, there are IG creators out there, Instagram um, creators out there who are getting deals for shows, you know, based off of them being a social media personality. Whereas back in the day, the amount of work that you had to do to even get noticed and get put on, it might be off-putting to some people where they feel like it's easier today. And you hear the same thing with athletes, you know, the old school athletes versus the new school where they're like, well, we didn't even have, you know, we we didn't even have this back in the day. We weren't even counting this back in the day. Like, would would you be seen the same way as like an athlete back then when now you have all of these rules that work in your favor, you know? Um, I think that that's something that, internally we need to as a community get past that mentality that this this person did not pay their dues because they didn't have it as hard as you had it that they're not as qualified as you because they didn't have to jump through all the hoops that you had to jump through um and i I think that that part of that um and then also going back to just the idea of competition the fact that we feel as if we can't exist in the same space there can only be so few of us what does it say as a race for us if we feel like there can only be one isa anything anyone who does something similar to that after the fact is copying her right as opposed to the fact that you know these other races out here have multiple you know there are shows on air that have been on air for decades that are similar very similar to each other with white casts and nobody says oh this is the same show like the fact that we feel like we're limiting ourselves, we feel the need to limit ourselves by saying we can only have one, um, I think is more detrimental to us because it makes us, you know, it reflects on us as if we don't think we're worthy of any, any more or any better than what we have. <laughs>